Hello, this is Rob. Um, I'm going to talk through how we build the uh, video drum kit that you see in this video here. Okay, so the first thing to do is to add the camera block. So you can search down the bottom here. Just click on it, select it, and then you just literally just drag and drop it into the main area. And there we go, load it up. That's me there. Okay, so the first thing to do is to then flip the video because at the moment if I move left, my if I move left in the real world it goes right on the screen, which is not what we want. We want it to be the same. So I'll just get a flip block and then just drop that in there. And then I can connect it up. So the way this works on live blocks is uh, the outputs on the right hand side and the inputs on the left hand side and you just literally can then connect a red, red is video in this case and you know for example audio is blue, different, so it's just literally as simple as just connecting the dots like that. and then you can see that's flipped on both axes which is not what we want, we just want it on the y axis. There you go, so now if I move right it goes right. Perfect. Okay, so the next step to build the, uh, the video drum kit is to build a kind of button that is triggered by movement in the video. Um, and because we want to build a number of those, uh, I'm going to build it inside a container. And a container is basically a way of building another layer in the software. Um, and you can copy and paste it and build, basically it just, uh, makes everything a bit more simple and more organized. So you go to building blocks, containers, and I'll just drop a container in. Okay, so in order to go into a container, you just double click on it. And then I want to add a port, so I want to add video in. Okay, now if I press escape to go up to the next level, you go back to here, you can see it's added the video in onto the container. So I can then connect that up. So now there's video coming from the camera, being flipped horizontally, and then going into the container block, which we can then build our video button. So the first thing to do then is to uh, take a smaller section of the image. So I'll take a sub image. And what this allows you to do is just pick out a smaller part of the image. You can select it either by this box here or you can control it with these controls here so you can graphically, you can uh, numerically control it. But for our purposes now, I think we'll just use this. Okay, um, the next step is to, uh, well, I'll just preview what's coming out of that so you can see that it's just a smaller part of the main image. So I'll connect that up. So if I just put that there, for instance, you can see that's a smaller part. And then if I move my hand, you can see there you go, my finger, much bigger. Okay. Um, and what we want to do with that is detect if there's movement in it. So detect if what's previously there is different from what's there now. Um, and you do that using an image processing block from background detection, which is background detection, and that just segments the foreground and the background. Uh, so foreground being moving parts. So as you can see, when I move my finger in that block, my finger comes up white and everything else comes black. Now there's a load of controls on here but we don't really need to worry about them for now because defaults will do perfectly well. And if we want to change this we can still change it at runtime, it's no problem. Okay, so the next step is to then, once we've got this we need to really know how many pixels are white and how many are black because then we can trigger off that. So I'm going to get a pixel counter and drop that in. Okay. So then we can see here, you can see the uh, it's counting non-zero pixels, zero pixels, total pixels, and then we've got a number here which is probably the one we want to use, which is the amount of non-zero pixels. So if I do that, you get a really high number, and then it just goes to zero when there's nothing there. Okay, so what I can then do is I can use a comparison. Uh, I'll just take a, a trigger. So these are control blocks, and they work slightly different to the uh, other blocks. 
um, in the you can map like this from any block to any block on these controls on the actual block you can uh, connect like that and that will actually map the um, the values so it's a different type so we've got two types really this is a stream and this is continuously passing through like large amounts of data whereas these ones will be triggered when they change and they'll just pass that particular bit of information on Okay, and then we want to know if it's greater than, so if the number of non-pixels is greater than, I don't know, let's say 0 0.1. So if 10% of the pixels are 1, then you can see the output here goes high. Okay. And then what do we want to do with that? Well, we probably want to trigger a sound. So I'm going to take uh, audio read, drop that here, uh, just go and find a sound, uh, loops and samples, samples. Okay, so I'm just going to pick out a, uh, a drum, let's just take kick. And then we need to connect that to an output because at the moment it's not going to play out of anything. So we'll just get our output, audio output. Um, I can add more stuff in later, but for now I'm just going to put that one here. Okay, so that's currently looping. We want to turn the loop off. And then if I click this button, every time I click it, it triggers the sound. And we want that to be connected to gone high. So whenever the number of pixels that is counted that are, that are uh, in the foreground have gone higher than that input there, which is 0 0.1, then this gone high signal here will be triggered. And that can then tell this to restart. OK, so now if I move my, there we go. So. Perfect. Okay, so obviously we're going to want more than one drum, but this kind of gives the, uh, the concept. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to, uh, instead of it using the audio output here, I'm going to make this block itself emit sound uh, to the level above. And the way I'm going to do that is by getting going to building blocks, ports, and then selecting audio out. Okay, close off this output and then drop the audio out in. Right, so now when I go to the level above, it's got audio out here. So I could then put an audio output on there. And then, perfect. Okay, so at the moment this is, this is good, it works. Um, but we need we want to add some more controls onto the uh, the level above. So realistically, we want to know we want to be able to add where this is selected, and also we probably want to add in which sound you want to use. And that's easy enough to do. So I'm going to just label this block first. I'm going to call it uh, um, video um, sound clip launcher. Okay. Uh, put a description if I want. So triggers audio clips from uh, movement in an area of the image. Okay, perfect. Okay, and now all I have to do is click this button here, which is the save that block button, and it will save it as a video sound clip launcher. So I click save. There we go. Okay, but as I said, we want to be able to bring uh, bring stuff up to this level. So to do that, we can actually use the GUI builder on here. It builds an interface on this block. So I'm going to just drop in a row. And then I'm going to drop in, so as you can see here now, it's got all of the different um, settings inside that block. 
Um, so we want this one, which is a sub-image control, where we can select out which part of the uh, image we want to use. So I'm going to drop that there. And then we're going to get the audio reader and just drop the file path. Simple as that. And then I'm going to lock it. Okay. And there we have our sound clip launcher. So we can control it from here now. And we can also select the files. Uh, so I'll save that. Okay. So now, uh, that's a simple way of building a sound clip launcher uh, using this uh, using live blocks. Um, and we probably want to use, as I say, more than one. So I can go into here now, custom blocks, containers, because it's built from a container, and I can find it. And it's called Video Sound Clip Launcher Lower Case, that one there. So I can drop that in, and as you can see, it's the same as the previous one. I can connect the video like that and I can connect the audio and it all mix it automatically. So they're going to be identical at the moment. But I'll just put them another one here and just put a slightly different sound on it. So let's put a I don't know, oil drum. <laughs> yeah. Oh that looks like that's looped. Oh no, it's just a long clip. Okay, so let's pick a short clip than that. Um just a hi hat. So now, so that's a simple uh, way to build a video sound clip launcher part of this. In the next video, I'm going to discuss uh, how to actually make it uh, show up as a button on the screen and build a slightly, uh, slightly more complex um, drum kit. Okay, cool. I will uh, be back soon with another video.